Hi everyone and welcome to Expressive Photography. I'm Alistair Ben. Um, as promised, we're going to go back to the workshop that I was running a few weeks ago and have a look at some of the photographs. But in today's video, I want to specifically talk about how to compose in flat light. Now, it's one of those things when you're running a workshop and people have invested quite a lot of money or traveled a long way and taken time off work to come to the west of Scotland. And obviously we can't guarantee good weather. Uh, and what we can guarantee though is lots of moodiness and empty space. So on the very first day of the workshop, we arrived at this first beach and it seemed really empty and the light was quite flat. And what we have to do in those circumstances and part of my job as an educator is to look at what is there and try and work out how we can create photographs in that environment to kind of engage and to get excited about. Because I think that's one of the really important things is that we can look at a scene that superficially looks quite flat or uninteresting or there's not, not an awful lot going on or there's no dramatic light and everyone's thinking, oh, when's it going to kick off? Are we going to get some God beams? Are we going to get some warm light? And when that doesn't happen, it's too easy to leave the scene feeling deflated and just kind of underwhelmed by the whole thing, almost as if we wasted our time. And that, as an expressive photographer, is cardinal sin number one, leaving the landscape feeling disappointed because it hasn't delivered our expectations. I think that's a huge error that I've fallen foul of in the last couple of decades, but I don't fall foul of now. So I can look at these images and it's not about the absence of great light, it's the presence of what we did discover. So what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into my Lightroom catalog, have a look at the photographs that I made during the whole session, uh, look at why I pointed my camera at them, dissect them, look at the compositions, and then what I'll do is I'll choose a couple of good candidates and then I'll actually work them off camera and we'll show them at the end of the video here. Now, one of the things about the Western Isles is that superficially you can arrive at these locations and they just seem empty and desolate. And that's part of its charm is that, that feeling of space. Um, now, when the light is flat, uh, it can feel a little bit uh, intimidating and it can feel a little bit low in energy. So let's dive into my Lightroom catalog and we'll start with the very, very first scene. Now, I have a confession to make. I had come into this workshop having not photographed for months, you know, really, really, I'd, I'd hardly photographed at all. And I've talked about this in the last couple of videos that I was feeling a bit rusty and a bit out of sorts. Um, so, it took me a while. So I made my first image at 9.12. The, the sun probably came up about 8.20, something like that. So about quarter past nine, I was starting to make photographs. And we actually were at that beach from 9.12 until about 11.33. And during that time, I made about 20 photographs. So on this particular day, I decided that I was going to shoot with my Laowa 12mm Prime. I wanted to find foregrounds that were going to fill the frame. And you can see in this first scene, if I go into the develop model module and click the, the crop overlay, this is the thirds line. So there's only about a sixth of the frame is actually sky. And I like this backdrop. I mean, the, the backdrop on this particular beach is beautiful, it's very iconic, it's a very famous place. Um, this is looking over to the Luskintyre area on the Isle of Harris. And this is the type of photograph where it looks superficially very, very flat, but quite quickly, if I add a little bit of a cool to warm transition, you know, maybe just introduce a little bit of warmth to that beach because the, the light was very cool and lighten things up a little bit and the top is a little bit too blue. You know, very quickly we can, I can kind of understand why I was pointing my camera at it. And if I add some contrast to that foreground, you can see the beautiful patterns in there. And it was a beautiful foreground. And quite quickly, we can see if we compare the before and after there, we can see that 
we've brought out quite a lot of that interest in the foreground and I can certainly understand why I pointed my camera at it. It feels very spacious. Those lines, they move up from the bottom right up to that seaweed lying on the beach and then it curves around and takes us back into the top of the frame where the surf adds some luminosity. So what we're probably going to be looking at a lot today is the five triggers, luminosity, contrast, color, geometry and atmosphere. They're the five things that are always going to engage me in the landscape. So quite quickly I realized that there were things on this beach but we had to be a little bit more creative I suppose in finding them. The next scene I focused my attention on was this one and you can see the image on the left was taken about 20 minutes before the one on the right and during that 20 minutes the light did develop slightly. There was a brief period where the clouds weren't quite as thick, the sun was exerting a little bit of influence on the scene and you can see just that difference it's made. We've gone from a kind of blue hour feel or a very flat blue feel to a much much warmer uh, and definitely more inviting scene. Now how we emotionally respond to compositions is massively important and we take our cloudy skies into the landscape with us even though it was kind of flat light our mindset is the thing that's going to shape our experience. If we go in thinking oh, there's no great light or there's no, there's no good compositions here or there's no energy or dynamics that is what we'll find. However if we go in feeling open and interested in the landscape we're far more likely to find something to engage with. I'll look at this image on the right now in a little bit more detail um, to kind of highlight what it was about the scene that caught my eye and why I think it's a reasonably successful photograph. So I've, I've made videos in the past about shooting in flat light and one of the things I always recommend is that if the sky isn't doing much finding a foreground with lots of interest in it is a really good way to engage people and I think we've been quite successful here. This red rock in particular the, the beautiful um, colors in this, uh, this rock are really engaging. I think there's just something very beautiful about it and then that dark patch and then there's a pale, uh, if I zoom in a little bit, you know it really is a very attractive boulder. And again because I'm using a 12mm prime I'm right on top of this scene. I mean I'm probably the camera's only maybe less than a meter above these rocks so everything's just exaggerated and stretched um, but there's, not a, there's no distortion on the horizon. It is a brilliant little lens, my favorite favorite 12 mil lens ever. Um, and I will definitely work this image uh, for the final scene but what I want to do is kind of look at what I've done to make what I consider to be a nice composition. So in flat light we're, we're losing contrast, we're losing that dynamics, we've got no shadows which is a positive in many cases, um, we lose that kind of sense of three-dimensionality. So what I've wanted to do here is to use transitions to create movement through the frame and how we can journey through the frame. So first of all I've anchored the bottom left hand side of the frame using this strong pointed rock. So that's a very strong indicator of it's like an arrow pointing into the frame. I've done the same with the right hand side so both the corners are kind of very solidly anchored so the composition feels very grounded. It takes us into this nice pale boulder and then because the the red dynamic rock is kind of left of center and it is really kind of quite strongly on a thirds line, it's very very close to that third point, it's, it becomes the anchor of the whole photograph is that red rock. So when we come to process it that red rock has to be very very prominent. We then have this rather nice meander that kind of drifts out uh, somewhat vertically but there are some angles in there as well so we're using the geometry to take the eye left and up and again we've got this convenient breaking wave here, the surf line and then we've got a pointed uh, peak there on the island uh, and then taking us into this distant very hazy mountains of North Harris. And then finally we have this other point coming in from the right hand side. So the whole thing is contained 
by geometry and then these angles that we're creating within the composition. So I'm very, very happy with this one. Um, and I think once it's been processed, we have some very, very good opportunities to make something that feels three-dimensional, that has depth, that has transitions from warm to cool, from dark to light, uh, from textured into atmospheric. So there's a whole bunch of things we can do to this photograph. And it's not about making it a glorious sunrise photograph. It's about making it the best that it can be. I'll probably tidy up some of these little seaweed patches that have been washed up onto the beach there. The tide was actually coming in, um, but there was some debris on the beach. And obviously we need to just, I, I would just clone those out, but we will come back to this one. But I will just very, very quickly demonstrate one thing, which is if I pull up a gradient here and add some clarity to the foreground, you will very quickly see how it increases that sensation of depth by making the foreground more tactile, more close, more immediate, giving it detail, giving it texture, giving it contrast, giving it some luminosity, even giving it a tiny touch of saturation. All of those things make it feel closer. And if I just quickly compare that with the image on the left, which is the, the, the raw file, you can see how very, very instantly the one on the right feels more three-dimensional and with more depth. Obviously I was there teaching and I had a client with me and you know, I'm very, very focused on him and helping him with his compositions and, and discussing the meaning and feeling of what he was trying to do. But during the, during the time between leaving him to do his own thing, uh, I would wander around and I did find another couple of compositions. This one is similar in feel. It's anchored on the left by that another big strong red rock, um, but it doesn't have any anchor on the right apart from the contrast in the scene. So what I'm just gonna do with this one is just very quickly add a bit of luminosity and contrast, and you will see that the image comes to life. We, we're adding light, we're bringing up the luminosity, and what that's gonna do is gonna increase the saturation in that red rock, which will increase that feeling of a red to blue because the background is bluish. The shadows and those peaks are quite blue. So we're creating this warm anchor to a blue distant horizon, which is always going to take the eye through the frame. I quite like this one too. I think this has got potential. I did go with a longer shutter speed here. Uh, I don't know why it's not showing. 120 seconds, so two minutes. Um, so that's created a very smooth uh, ocean there. Uh, so it's lost a bit of that dynamics that we had in the previous scene with the rolling waves and so forth. There was another couple of scenes. This one is also a similar feel. Um, and again, it's really just a case of understanding that we have a warm rock in the foreground, something warm and engaging. We've also got a nice kind of arrangement of rocks. I like the way this meanders out to the left here and then pulls us back right. There's a little bit of oddness going on with the the way the horizon is on this scene because the island, uh, it's not actually horizontal. It's, it, it's, it's leaning in slightly. So we end up with this very odd situation. We're trying to find a perfect, um, a perfect straight horizon can be quite awkward. You can see that the island kind of pulls in because of the, the, the slight, uh, the way it's, it's curved really. Uh, but again, this is another scene that I think could be quite a beautiful photograph, um, but it's more spacious again, leading us out into space. The others, you know, I'm always going to just point my camera at things that interest me. I've put on my Tamron 150 to 600 here and I've zoomed right into this point of light. I did mention this image uh, a couple of Sundays ago, um, looking at, you know, this, the, the type of thing that catches our eye. Likewise with this, the more space we have, the, the more air, the more ocean, the more calm the images are going to feel. 
I will always focus in on details uh, to try and explore um, textures, uh, color relationships. I mean, here we have a bit of a cool to warm going on. The ocean is slightly cool. The rocks are slightly warm. If I add a little bit of contrast there with the colors, you can see we end up with a little bit more in the way of a cool to warm transition. So I, I'm always open to pointing my camera at anything and you wouldn't think that this was taken on a flat light day. Now this type of thing isn't everyone's cup of tea. Uh, I appreciate that, you know, photos like this take you know, they're, they're not the same as a big open landscape, to be to be sure. Uh, but they're still things that I'm happy to point my camera at, spend some time with, explore visual relationships, uh, look at the influence that time has on the scene. So there's an awful lot of things that are keeping my mind ticking over. And a lot of it's playing, you know, really, it's just play. I did settle near the end here on another scene, which I did quite like. Now again, this is definitely one where the horizon of the island is going to make it look kind of funky. So it's almost worth leveling the island just so it feels more rational. I know for a fact that that is now not level uh, compared to how I photographed it. I'm very uh, meticulous in the field with making sure my camera is level all the time. Um, but on this particular case, just leveling the island a little bit is going to make it feel better. Now, I'm very interested sometimes to, to explore the influence of contrast and just to see what's going to happen if I just crank up the contrast. Now, trying to find a neutral color in these scenes can be very, very difficult. In flat light, the light is always going to be bluish. There's always going to be a bluish feel. But there are some warm tones in here and it may be worth exploring that by adding a tiny bit of warmth and light to that foreground. And as soon as we introduce, because there's sand underneath the water, I mean, this is the color of the beach. Rather than making the whole image warmer, if I just use the foreground sand and lift up the feel of that, it's had quite a profound effect on the overall scene. We've created contrast, color contrast. All of these different types of contrast, I discuss them in great length in my Luminosity and Contrast ebook and also my Color of Meaning ebook. These are things that I dive into very, very deep. Uh, for those of you who are still interested, I do have the 25% discount. I've decided to extend it right through December until Boxing Day, the 26th of December. Um, it's just a thank you for everyone who's subscribed to the channel, who's discovering our expressive photography work and the type of concepts that I'm delivering here. Emotional engagement with landscapes and how to understand landscapes better and how to accept landscapes better. So if you want to use that Cyber25 discount code, it's going to be valid until the 26th of December. I think one of the most important things when we're out with our cameras is to be accepting of the conditions that are there. There's nothing worse than going into a landscape thinking about how amazing it's going to be and how awesome it's going to be and then the conditions don't deliver. During that nine, 10 day workshop, we had very little great light. Most of it was quite flat, quite subdued, but we were out in the field every day, making photographs, engaging with the landscape and feeling good about the days we were spending in the landscape. Coming away from a scene like this and feeling energized and satisfied and as if you've given your brain a workout and you're, you're challenging yourself is a really excellent thing to do. It's a really powerful way to spend our time. So I think when we're composing in flat light, the key takeaway from this video should be, if the, if the sky is quite flat and uninteresting, that's partly perspective. It's not, it's not uninteresting to itself. I mean, the, the clouds don't care. Um, but our perception of it may be, it's a bit flat, it's a bit uninteresting. And one of the things that is a really good thing to do is to 
think about having less sky in the frame. Here I have about a quarter of the frame is made up of sky, which means three quarters of the scene is basically foreground and midground, and even some of the background. Now what that's doing is it's throwing all the interest into the front of the frame, which really engages the viewer. And as long as we can process this to make it feel engaging, because otherwise why have we filled 75% of the frame with it? And I think that is the key. Um, I will process these and we'll show a slideshow at the end of the video. Um, like I said, the takeaway from this is that we take our cloudy perspectives into the landscape with us. Uh, the beach is a beautiful beach. The mountains are beautiful mountains. The sky was lovely and atmospheric and the rocks and the geology were providing this story of time and location you know, these rocks would have been dropped down that beach by a, by a glacier uh, at some point, maybe 60 or 70,000 years ago. So at the end of the day, there's a story here, the water flowing through. There was a loch behind us that was draining and that's basically what these little channels are. So for a seemingly flat and uninteresting location, I'm very, very happy with this photograph. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get to work on those now. We'll add them at the end of the video and I hope you find them engaging and interesting. And that of course you've taken something away from the video. Uh, thank you to everyone who's been subscribing to the channel recently. We've had this massive growth over the last month um, and it's just incredible to, to have a bigger audience and more people appreciating uh, expressive photography and the benefits of expressive photography. So thank you very much for that. It is always hugely appreciated. Um, if you have anything to say about these compositions, please dive into the comments. I've been really enjoying reading your comments from the last couple of videos, um, and we've had a couple of really good discussions kicking off as well. So thank you very much as always for that. Um, right, I better get my processing boots on and uh, we'll see what we can do with these photographs and hopefully you will enjoy what you see. Join us on Sunday for some more expressive photography. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Take care now, bye.